السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm Dr. Maha Abu Hashim, Professor of Psychology and Sura Faculty of University and here we are going to discuss in this lecture a malignant chondral forming tumor. Our objectives are to discuss about malignant chondral forming tumors and Chordoma as regards classification, incidence, radiological features, gross and microscopic features, and differential diagnosis. First, we will start with the classification of chondrosarcoma. And as you know, chondrosarcoma is a malignant tumor of bone capable of chondrite forming can produce cartilage matter, cartilaginous matter. We have conventional chondrosarcoma, the classic form of chondrosarcoma. Then we have chondrosarcoma variants, which include de-differentiated chondrosarcoma, clear cell chondrosarcoma, and meeting kind of Starting with the conventional type of chondrosarcoma, Chondrosarcoma is a malignant neoplasm with cells that produce cartilage matrix. It is characterized radiologically by ring and arc. Seen in radiology, they represent peripheral inchondral ossification and reactive bone formation. So I may have reactive bone, not malignant bone. So characteristically, it is the tumor is seen in adults in the fifth and sixth decades of life. It occurs most frequently in the pelvis and medullary cavity of the femur, humerus, then the ribs. Patients initially complain of the persistent mild pain and often local. For the conventional osteosarcoma, it may arise either primary in normal or healthy previously healthy bone or it may be secondary that arises from a previous disease bone uh, as in the presence of pre-existing benign tumor in chondromas or more commonly in chondromatosis osteochondroma or more commonly uh, multiple familial osteochondromatosis and fibrous dysplasia can occur also as a secondary tumor in a diseased bone such as irrigated bone or bones with Paget disease. The third form of chondrosarcoma is periosteal chondrosarcoma that arises on the surface of bone or as we call it juxtacortical Chondrosarcoma. In the WHO classification, low grade chondrosarcoma is classified as intermediate type. Intermediate in the sense of it is a locally aggressive tumor. So you can report a case of low grade chondrosarcoma as a typical cartilaginous tumor slash chondrosarcoma grade 1 if you are not not if you are not quite sure. Why? Because both categories, a typical cartilaginous tumor, chondrosarcoma, grade 1, they often uh, are very difficult to differentiate and by the same time, they have the same type of treatment. Both are treated by extensive curettage. So, it's not a problem not to diagnose correctly or precisely the tumor. If you are not sure, please denote it as a typical cartilaginous tumor slash chondrosarcoma grade 1. For chondrosarcoma, the conventional type, it, is, it usually arises in the proximal, proximal or axial skeleton of old people in their 50s and 60s, unless they are secondary on top of inchondroma or osteochondroma. 
The radiological features, they show evidence of slow erosive crust with cortical erosion. So this is a chondrosarcoma in the pelvis. It has ill-defined boulders with spotty calcification. And to denote that or to know that it is a cartilaginous tumor, we have lobulated surface of the tumor. Macroscopically, grossly, we have lobules of chondroid. There are lobules of chondroid with central coalescence. In the center, the lobules are fused together. Here are these white areas are foci of calcification. I may have cystic change. I may have areas of hemorrhage. I may have areas of necrosis. So I may have secondary change. For conventional chondrosarcoma, you have to sample the specimen, your specimen, very precisely. Why? Because if you only take one snip of your sample, you can miss. You can miss other diagnoses. You can miss the differentiated chondrosarcoma, or you can miss chondrolastic osteosarcoma. So you have to sample your specimen very precisely. In conventional chondrosarcoma, the malignant cells produce hyaline chondroid matter with central necrosis or calcification. At the periphery, I may have fibrosis or benign reactive bone. Take care. Any malignant bone, not part of a separate de-differentiated area, should change your diagnosis to osteosarcoma. So, it is not allowed to have malignant osteoid unless it is the de-differentiated component of a de-differentiated chondrosarcoma. What's meant by cytological atypia in the conventional chondrosarcoma? Com cytological atypia means plump nuclei in many cells with more than one occasional binucleated form. I can find many binucleated forms. And giant chondrocytes with more than one large nuclei and the chromatin clump. So these are the cytological criteria that may be present in chondrocytes. However, I have exceptions in the sense that I may have increased cellularity with cellular atypia and still the tumor is benign as occurs in skin chondromas in the small, hand, small bones of the hand and feet in children or in multiple in chondromatosis or in periosteal chondroma. So these tumors are still benign, however, they have increased cellularity and some sort of atypia. On the other hand, I may have bland cytology that can occur in the sternum and I should diagnose it as chondrosarcoma. So I may have bland cytology and it is chondrosarcoma. I may have increased cellularity with pleomorphic feature and the tumors are considered as benign in chondroma or periosteal chondroma. So these are the exceptions. So if I have exception, increased cellularity and I call the tumor benign and bland cytology while I call the tumor malignant. What's the surest sign of malignancy? In chondrosarcoma, the surest sign is invasion. So, in your specimen, please search for invasion or termination. So, invasion, it is the single most useful criterion with wall-to-wall -wall filling here of a pre-existing marrow space with partial erosion of the whole lamellar bone trabecula. So this is the surest sign of malignancy to, to indicate that this chondrosarcoma is malignant. Now this is chondrosarcoma. This is lobules of malignant cartilage with increased cellularity. 
that fill the marrow spaces and include host lamellar bone and surrounded all around. This is a fragment of host bone. This is another fragment. So the fragments of host bone should be completely surrounded by the growing cortex. So chondrosarcoma permeates bone as single confluent mass entrapping pre-existing bone cavity. Another form of invasion, this is a chondrosarcoma, it invades through the haversian canal and this is the cortical bone inside the haversian canal I can see a lot of malignant chondrons. So permeation in chondrosarcoma may also extend through the haversian canals of the cortex. Now about the grading of chondrosarcoma. Grading determines the likelihood of the tumor to metastasize. The clotted grade is the single most important prognostic factor. I have three grades. In grade one, I have tubules of highlight matrix, gland cytology with no mitosis, no necrosis, and no mesoid release. In grade two, I have mesoid and or necrotic foci with increased cellularity of the ligule at the periphery. My cytologic asphyxia and my disease should not exceed 2 per 10 high power. In grade 3, I have extensive mixoid or necrot necrotic areas, freeze peripheral cellularity at the periphery of the ligules, obvious cytologic asphyxia, and my disease more than 2 per 10 high power. Now, what's border? Line chondrosarcoma. If the clinical and radiological features are suggestive of malignancy and you can see under the microscope a blend tumor with no increased cellularity, no necrosis, or mixoid areas, it is a borderline chondrosarcoma. So clinically and radiologically suggestive, but no firm histological malignant features. Treatment of chondrosarcoma to ensure good prognosis and good survival of the patient, you have to do complete excision at the first operation with clear margins, with no stillage or steeding. This will give you the best hope for cure of your patient. For grade 1, this is grade 1 chondro. Sarcoma. This is the chondroid matrix. This is the cellularity. It's not so much increased more than the normal cartilage. Chondrocytes are found in lapis. The nuclei are small and of equal size. No binucleated cells inside the lacrimi. No mitosis and no tumor pit. So this picture can completely resemble a benign chondroma. So grade 1 chondrosarcoma show only mildly increased cellularity at minimal asphyxia compared with normal cartilage. The morphology overlaps substantially with inchondromas. How to differentiate between inchondroma and chondrosarcoma? There are clinical, radiological, and histological clues for to differentiate. If you consider the clinical pain, ask your patient about pain. If pain is not attributed directly to the neoplastic cartilage, this is in favor of inchondroma. However, if pain is attributed to the neoplastic cartilage, it may indicate low-grade chondrosarcoma. However, how to evaluate this criteria. I can judge only upon pain. 
and the need, it may be difficult to assess due to the proximity of enchondromas to the joint. If I have an enchondroma near the joint, it will cause pain. However, it is completely benign. Now, let's see under the microscope. In enchondroma, there is lack of increased cellularity or double nucleated chondrocyte or mixed chain or chondrocyte necrosis. In low-grade chondrosarcoma, I may not have increased cellularity or mixoid or chondroid chain, or sorry, mixoid or necrotic site. So the cytologic and histologic features may overlap. The degree of overlap is even more apparent in patients with multiple enchondromatosis, especially if uh, it is in children. Now, there's the criteria. Let's consider mitosis. In enchondroma, we don't have mitotic activity. And in low grade, it is supposed to have some sort of mitotic activity. However, mitotic activity is extremely rare in, chondrosa, in enchondromas, and also it may not be present in uh, chondrosarcoma, even in grade 3. Now, Let's consider the criteria. In enchondroma, there is lack of infiltrative growth factor. So here, this is the most important. And in low-grade chondrosarcoma, I have an infiltrative growth factor. So this is the most reliable criterion to differentiate enchondroma from low-grade chondrosarcoma. And also, staining with CRG may differentiate benign from malignant chondroid tumors. Now let's proceed to grade 2. In this grade 2 chondrosarcoma, this is the chondroid matrix. There is increased cellularity. There is a binucleated cell. There is a binucleated cell inside black unit. Cells are pleomorphic with cytological sequence. Here, here is the chondroid matrix. There is increased cellularity. Here is an area of mixoid matrix. And here, this is a fragment of host lamellar bone surrounded completely by the tumor cell. So this is grade 2 chondrosarcoma. So in grade 2 chondrosarcoma, it, there is increased cellularity, pathologic activity, double nuclei are evident, permeation of viable lamellar bone is evident here. So this is grade 3 chondrosarcoma. There is evident increased cellularity, there is marked acetia, the nuclei are hyperchromatic with irregular nuclear membrane. Here is mitotic figure. Here is another mitotic figure. Here is another mitotic figure. I have my evident mitosis more than two per hypergy. Also here, this is an exoid area. And there is a spindling of the chondrocytes, especially at the periphery of the legume. So, in grade 3 chondrosarcoma, it demonstrates diffuse hypercellularity, pleomorphic chondrocytes with nuclear hyperchromasia, regular nuclear, nuclear membrane, and necrosis. Mitotic activity is present in this case, but Remember that mitosis may be rare even in grade 3 chondrosarcoma. So don't rely only on mitosis in chondrosarcoma. Now, let's consider the differential diagnosis of conventional, conventional chondrosarcoma. Chondroblastic osteosarcoma. In chondroblastic osteosarcoma, I have areas of chondroblastic differentiation. However, in chondrosarcoma, you should never 
find osteoid matrix. If you find osteoid matrix in a chondrosarcoma, sarcoma, then immediately consider osteosarcoma, chondroblastic osteosarcoma. So the first differential diagnosis is chondroblastic osteosarcoma. Sometimes de-differentiated chondrosarcoma. In de-differentiated chondrosarcoma, you have areas of low-grade chondrosarcoma with an area of high-grade sarcoma. So once more, you have to thoroughly sample your patient. Second differential diagnosis is chondromyxoid fibroma. In chondromyxoid fibroma, I have lobules of myxoid areas with concentrations of the cell at the periphery and separated by fibrous septa with giant cells. However, in chondromyxoid fibroma, the tumor is peripheral with a long axis parallel to that of bone and there is no invasion of the host bone, which is the most reliable sign. Third differential diagnosis is chordoma, especially the chondroid chordoma that occurs at the base of the skull. It can be difficult to differentiate from low-grade chondrosarcoma, especially with small specimens. However, in chondroid chordoma that arises in the skull base, I have to do immune histochemistry. This one situation in which immune histochemistry is conclusive in to differentiate between types of bone tumor. Chordomas stain with keratin, with epithelial markers, and with brachial. However, chondrosarcoma stains only with S100, and S100 cannot differentiate it from chordoma because chordoma is also S100 positive. So it is the epithelial markers, the keratins, and the brachial that can differentiate between the two lesions, between chordoma, chondroid chordoma, and conventional chondrosarcoma. So let's now consider the variants of chondrosarcoma. The first one is de-differentiated chondrosarcoma. De-differentiated chondrosarcoma is defined by the presence of a biphasic tumor. I have two types of tumor within one tumor. One is chondrosarcoma, usually of low grade, and abruptly I have high grade sarcoma. So it is a biphasic tumor composed of conventional chondrosarcoma, usually grade one, with abrupt occurrence or appearance of a high grade sarcoma. However, the term de-differentiated is not correct. De-differentiation means I have a cell that de-differentiates to a more aggressive form, and this is not the case. In de-differentiated chondrosarcoma, the reason for the biphasic growth of the tumor is differential differentiation of the progenitor stem cell. Here I have one tumor stem cell. It can differentiate two chondroid or tumor chondrosarcoma, and it can differentiate by the same time to a high-grade sarcoma. So it is variant differentiation of the progenitor stem cell of the tumor, and the process is not just the differentiation. Histologically, the de-differentiated chondrosarcoma is made up of low-grade cartilage tumor, sharply demarcated from a high-grade soft tissue tumor that may be malignant fibrous hepatocytoma, may be fibrosarcoma, may be pleomorphic sarcoma, or it may be even osteosarcoma. The differentiated chondrosarcoma represent about 10% of all chondrosarcoma. It tends to occur at the same location of the conventional site, the belt and proximal humerus, but with a far worse prognosis, or the 5-year survival rate is below or less than 10%.
heat and sense is in the sixth decade and both sexes are affected. This is the radiological feature of the differentiated chondro sarco in the proximal humerus. See this area? In this area, I have lobule of osteolytic tumor, which cause indentation of the cortex with ill-defined border. But here, the tumor breaks through the cortex with extension to soft tissue and soft tissue extension. So, this is a malignant cartilaginous tumor. This is an area of chondroid with lobules and areas of calcium. So the radiograph shows the differentiated chondro sarcoma involving the proximal humerus here. The pattern of central mineralization is typical to chondro sarcoma. However, the aggressive appearance of a large soft tissue mass suggests the differentiated chondro Grossly, here is a tumor, the chondroid tumor, occupying the, the metaphysis, the medulla of metaphysis of long tool. Here is chondroid areas, here is chondroid areas, but here there is breakdown of the cortex with soft tissue extension of a tumor that appears brownish with areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. So I have two patterns of the tumor. A chondroid lobulated tumor here and a soft tissue irregular tumor. So, the differentiated here, the differentiated chondrosarcoma in the medullary part of the tumor is composed of gray white cartilage. The tan brown extraosseous portion represents a high grade sarcomatous component. Under the microscope, I have a biphasic tumor. I have here chondrosarcomatous component and here an abruptly, sharply demarcated from the chondroid area, I have high grade sarcoma with malignant spindle shaped cells. Higher power of the spindle cell sarcoma, really, these are pleomorphic spindle shaped cells with mitosis and here the tumor produces osteoid matrix so I have a malignant cell that produces osteoid matrix which is osteosarcoma so here the high grade sarcoma in this example is a, a osteosarcoma so the differentiated chondrosarcoma is characteristically a biphasic tumor I have two types of tumor with broad zones of hyaline cortex juxtaposed with a second high grade sarcoma. The differentiated component consists of high grade sarcoma, such as malignant fibrous histiocytoma, and in this example, it is an osteosarcoma. Now, what about the differential diagnosis of the differentiated chondrosarcoma? First is chondroblastic osteosarcoma when I have a high grade sarcoma that's osteosarcoma with a chondrosarcoma. In, osteo, in, in chondroblastic osteosarcoma, the two components are intermixed with each other and there is no sharp demarcation between the two malignant elements. So the chondroblastic osteosarcoma but this has pleomorphic cortex that admits with the osteoid forming malignant cells. Take into consideration the age of the patient. Here in chondroblastic osteosarcoma, it is an adolescent or a teenager, while in the differentiated, it is an old patient and clinical picture of the tumor. Second differential diagnosis is mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. In mesenchymal chondrosarcoma, it is also a biphasic tumor with chondrosarcomatous area and another sarcomatous area, which in mesenchymal chondrosarcoma 
is a small round blue cell tumor that resembles human sarcoma. So using chimal chondrosarcoma, but this has a monomorphic ewingoid sarcoma component. I have also chondrosarcomatous component, and the second is small round blue cell tumor. The second variant of chondrosarcoma is the clear cell chondrosarcoma. And clear cell chondrosarcoma is probably the rarest variant of chondrosarcoma, representing only 1-2% of chondrosarcoma. It is unusual in that it affects younger age. So it affects younger age than the conventional type of chondrosarcoma. Peak incidence in the third decade. In more than one half of clear cell chondrosarcoma, they involve, regarding the site, it involves the proximal femur, the proximal humerus, and the distal femur. Take care. Proximal femur, proximal humerus, and distal femur are the site of predilection of chondroblastoma. So, regarding the site, it has the same site of chondroblastoma. Here, a tumor with very jolices and with a sclerotic rim, well-defined rim. The tumor here is APTVA. So, regarding the site, it affects the same bones and it is also within these bones, it is APTVL, just like chondroblastoma. So, clear cell chondrosarcoma is a type of chondrosarcoma that often occurs in the epiphysis. This is another peculiar character of the tumor. This has led to speculation that the lesion is somehow related to chondroblastoma. Same type of bone and the same type within the bone. So this is a well demarcated lesion in the epiphysis of a skeletally mature individual. Another example of paragology there is an epiphyseal tumor well circumscribed tumor in a skeletally mature individual. What about the microscopic appearance? In the microscopic appearance, I have large cells with clear cytoplasm, central nuclei with no pleomorphism. These nuclei are, run, are rounded, central with prominent nucleoli. The cells appear clear due to intracytoplasmic glycogen. Here is another area of the tumor. Large polyhedral cells with clear cytoplasm. And here they are entrapping probably of post lamellar bone. So I have an infiltrated tumor with this criteria. This microscopic appearance may be misinterpreted as secondary renal cell carcinoma. So this is one of the most important differentials to consider in clear cell chondrosarcoma. So the cell in clear cell chondrosarcoma show ample tail to clear cytoplasm, will defined nuclear membrane, and central central plate round to ovoid nuclei with prominent nucleoli. Prominent nucleoli. Nuclear atypia is typically not marked. I don't have severe nuclear atypia. Now, to ensure that I am in a chondrosarcoma and not in a metastatic adenocarcinoma or metastatic carcinoma, whatever, I will stain with S100. The tumor cell stain with S100, which is the clue that this is a clear cell chondrosarcoma and not a metastatic tumor. So the immunohistochemical profile of clear cells 
is S100 positive, cytoskeleton negative, and epithelial membrane angin negative. The reverse, if it is a metastatic adenocarcinoma or metastatic carcinoma. Differential diagnosis of the tumor is chondroblastoma, has the same site, more or less the same radiology, and however, it chondroblastoma occurs in a younger age, and what's more important that chondroblastoma does not infiltrate the bone. I have to differentiate it from osteoblastoma, giant cell tumor, which is a tumor that is located epithelially, and if it has secondary aneurysmal bone cyst component, I have to sample the tumor very well to be sure that it is a chondrosarcoma and not primary aneurysmal bone cyst. The differential diagnosis from metastatic carcinoma, which is more important, the clear cell chondrosarcoma has opposite immune profile and lack the other features of metastatic carcinoma. Metastatic carcinoma are usually more pleomorphic, more with more cytological atypia, and will have the immune profile of their uh, uh, tissue of origin. See the X2 in colorex. Now the last variant of chondrosarcoma, which is mesenchymal chondrosarcoma, another long story. Mesenchymal chondrosarcoma is also a rare variant of chondrosarcoma, representing 1 to 3 percent of all chondrosarcoma. Like clear cell chondrosarcoma, the mesenchymal variant peaks during the second and third decades of life. So this tumor, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma, occurs in a younger age group than the conventional and the differentiated chondrosarcoma. Usually the tumor has poor prognosis, affects young adults, and affects any bone. The size again, can affect any bone. May be extra sleepy, especially in the region of the head and neck. Radiologically, it has a poor calcification. This is the radiology of a mesenchymal chondrosarcoma in the medullary cavity of the metaphysis of the tibia. The tumor has infiltrated borders with areas of calcification here. So the radiograph of mesenchymal chondrosarcoma involving the proximal tibia, it is a permeated metaphysial lesion with calcification. Grossly, the tumor is evidently biphasic. I have chondroid areas with bluish lobulated areas and hybrid or a sarcomatous element that is fleshy and has areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. So grossly, the most common finding in mesenchymal chondrosarcoma is haphazard admixture of pale blue firm cartilage and the fleshy pink soft tumor, soft tissue tumor. I may have gritty calcification, cystic changes, necrosis and hemorrhage are common in the mesenchymal type, in the mesenchymal element and not in the chondroid area. Microscopically, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma demonstrate a biphasic pattern. See here. I have a biphasic pattern. This is allobule of cartilage, chondrosarcoma. And here the other element is called small round blue cell tumor. The small round blue cell tumor can go in differential diagnosis with fluent sarcoma, lymphoma, and small cell osteosarcoma. So these are the small round blue cell tumor. So microscopically, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma demonstrates a biphasic pattern composed of hyaline cartilage component with a small round blue cell tumor in the other part of the tumor. The two components are usually abruptly adjacent to one another. However, they may be gradual 
transition between the two types of tissue. This is mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. Here are the chondrosarcomatous areas. Here are the small round blue cell tumor elements with a vascular pattern of tag hole blood vessels in a hemangial cell cytomatous pattern. Here is another tumor. This is the chondrosarcomatous part, and this is the small round blue cell tumor. So you here are somewhat tender with no matrix in between. So at low power, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma in a bistage tumor composed of hyaline cartilage and the small round blue cell. The cartilaginous component is variable but usually com constitute a minority of the tumor. Once more, good sampling is mandatory. The cartilage is usually low grade, well demarcated from the other components. The small cell component is mostly undifferentiated oval to spindle shaped cell, hemangiopel cytomatous pattern like blood vessels are evident in the small round cell blue. This, in this tumor, these are the chondroid areas and this is the small round blue cell tumor. Here the blood vessels have hemangiopel cytomatous pattern. Here is the chondroid area, the chondrosarcomatous area. Here is the small round blue cell tumor area with the blood vessels stating the stag hole pattern or hemangiopericytomatous pattern. Now, mesenchymal chondrosarcoma has a specific or a very peculiar immune histochemical profile. Remember that the tumor is by stages. I have a chondrosarcomatous area and small round blue cell tumor area. The cartilage cells ex express vimentin and S100 like any cartilaginous tumor. The small blue cells stain with vimentin, okay, CD99, blue 7 neuron specific enolase, and SOC9. CD99, LU7, and neuron specific enolase can be positive in Ewing sarcoma, but SOX9 is peculiar for mesenchymal chondrosarcoma. So, SOX9 is not expressed in Ewing sarcoma, primitive neuroepidermal tumor, and in osteosarcoma, except if in osteosarcoma. The cartilaginous compo component is of a chondroblastic osteosarcoma. Chondroid component stains once more to care. The chondroid component, malignant chondroid component, stains with ERG, like any chondrosarcoma. But malignant, small round cell components are negative for it. Now for the differential diagnosis. I have to differentiate the small round cell blue area from small cell osteosarcoma, lymphoma, and Ewing sarcoma. So, differential diagnosis from small cell osteosarcoma and you differentiated chondrosarcoma. In a small cell osteosarcoma, chondrosarcoma stains with SOX9, osteosarcoma not. I have to differentiate it from lymphoma, LCA and matrix, chondroid matrix will differentiate. In Ewing sarcoma, Ewing sarcoma does not have chondroid matrix or spindling. In chondroid areas will stain with S100, while in Ewing it does not stain. While in Ewing I have a very specific Translocation, Ewing sarcoma, L1, translocation, translocation between 12, 22, 11, 22, sorry, 11, 22. Now, recently, a very specific immune stain for mesenchymal chondrosarcoma is HEY1, NCOA2, fusion, 
nuclear fusion between these loci. Uh, this fusion has been identified in mesenchymal chondral sarcoma. The identity of this fusion can be very helpful in confirming the diagnosis of mesenchymal chondral sarcoma. Thank you very much. See you next video, inshallah. Bye.